and, and here's the weirdest thing of all. Serious Christians, now I don't mean saints, I just mean observant Christians, the, 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 the equivalent of, of a Muslim who actually understands the five pillars of Islam and practices them faithfully, goes to mosque and so on. Uh, serious Christians, people who would, you know, say pray, who would go to church regularly, who'd read their Bibles from time to time, who would believe the basic doctrines of the faith, right? Not heroic Christians, just serious observant Christians. When we poll people like that in at least North America, which is the, the data I know best, they apparently, as a group, live socially useful and even admirable lives. Uh, and the North American data show that they have generally happier and stabler marriages with a higher reported enjoyment even of sex, which would not necessarily occur to us as self-evident. I, I, I move on. Uh, they have uh, lower instances of teen pregnancy. They have higher participation in volunteering within the Christian sector and outside. They have higher contributions to charity, again, not only to their own charities, but to other charities as well. In fact, these are exemplary citizens. And if you look at the polls by Gallup and the National Opinion Research Center and Robert Worthnow's work at Princeton and Christian Smith's work at the University of North Carolina, over and over again, you see that this Christianity, with all of its very strange ideas, seems to produce citizens that the rest of us can actually generally admire. So granted that Christianity teaches really strange things, why do most of its most observant members live in ways that do not seem dumb, delusional, or dangerous? So that's the problem I want to set for us tonight. And by way of conclusion, the Christian religion is, I would say, from certain respectable points of view, dumb, delusional, and dangerous. And I think Christians shouldn't try to blow off that reality. I think those of us who are Christians need to take it seriously as a genuine obstacle in our relationships with other people. We need to appreciate just how very strange and even threatening it is to encounter people who believe the very strange things we do. And yet the Christian religion seems to produce, even from some non-Christian points of view, people who seem decidedly intelligent, sane, and helpful, and non-Christians shouldn't blow off that reality either. But they need to wrestle with that as a very odd and very big fact. Second, I think Christianity can actually explain these phenomena. What I mean by that is that the Christian understanding of things can actually explain atheists. It can explain why people might think like Richard Dawkins or Friedrich Nietzsche who resolutely refuse to believe in what I think are some of the most basic and best attested facts of human experience. Why would such smart people not get what I think is kind of abundantly true? Well, here's a few reasons. There are important grounds to doubt that God exists, that is, the God of the Abrahamic religions, who's supposed to be all good and all powerful. I mean, the problem of evil is still a problem. And, and I think they're justified in some ways, in some ways in their lack of belief because there are lots of people who don't believe in this God, including a lot of people who are intellectually and morally very impressive. So they've got good company. Major institutions in Australian society, as elsewhere, act as if God does not exist. They tend to repress, in fact, expression of belief or any actions on behalf of belief of God since they tend, as institutions do, to absolutize themselves in their particular spheres, and they brook no rival value system. When you're at work in one of the big towers in the CBD, you're not supposed to be religious. You're supposed to be focused on the business at hand. And religion, in fact, can be seen as interfering with the business at hand. And that's true in entertainment, it's true in sport, it can be true in healthcare. Religion can kind of muck things up because it's an alternative value system that can be getting in the way. In sum, as I read it, as somebody who is now expert on Australian life because I've been here for more than a week, in your country as in mine, life is functionally atheistic and encourages or even requires a kind of functional atheism. And to believe finally in this God means to face one's own inadequacies and one's own record of sin. And who wants to do that? 
and to have to repent of one's failures and to trust this God to forgive and heal and direct one's life. And who wants to do that? So it seems to me there are a number of good reasons why, from a Christian point of view, there are people like Richard Dawkins and Friedrich Nietzsche. Christianity, I think, can also explain why so many people are Christians. I mean, Christians think that Christianity is true. So that's why lots of people are Christians, because lots of people get it. From a Christian point of view, God helps people to believe in this odd truth. We speak of faith believing in this as a gift. And, in fact, lots of respectable people believe and practice the Christian religion. So we have good company also. And I think from the Christian point of view, Christians and non-Christians can share similar values and respect each other. After all, we live in the same world. And we're supposed to engage in the same work that God gave all human beings to do, to cultivate the world, to care for each other. And frankly, another reason why so many non-Christians can work well with Christians in Australia as they do in Canada is because most of the people who aren't religious and claim to be non-religious are non-Christians. And they share a number of the values with their Christian neighbors. So it seems to me that the Christian world and life view can explain why there are atheists and why there are Christians and how Christians and non-Christians can work together. And I wonder whether Dawkins or Nietzsche can actually explain Christianity. How would they explain Christianity's strangeness? Where would these ideas possibly come from? I mean, if Christianity isn't true, then who would make up a story like this? Who would think that this is a sellable religion? I mean, I get how Islam's popular. I get how Buddhism's popular. I, I teach these religions all the time. I can quite enthusiastically tell students, here's why sensible people believe these sensible religions. But why would somebody believe such a convoluted, fantastic, and, and frankly counterintuitive fairy tale like Christianity? And, and you can see Dawkins just doesn't know. Like he, he, he's kind of like, why would anybody think this? Why would Christianity be so popular? Not just that anybody believes it, but so many people believe it. And in fact, why, to, make it, you know, to sort of tighten the screw a little more, why would it appeal to at least some indubitably brilliant and apparently psychologically healthy people? You can, you can see uh, Dawkins in, in The God Delusion and elsewhere saying, well, you know, I actually do know three reputable scientists who are Christians. Now, I think it's kind of, kind of cute that he can only think of three. You know, he's like, I think he needs to get out more. But at least there are three in his life where he says, you know, I mean, they are, I have to confess, they're pretty smart. And, and they're Christians. And he, and he simply has no way to explain it. He doesn't want to call them mad, but that seems to be the only category available to him. And why would these dumb, delusional, and dangerous people be apparently so respectable in the eyes of, of the people of other faiths and outlooks as well. I don't think they can actually explain us. In other words, I think Christians can explain atheists. I don't think atheists can explain Christians. And I find that interesting because our explanations are supposed to be able to explain everything. That's what a religion's for. That's what a philosophy is for, is to explain all the data. That's the most important intellectual question of all. What's the explanation that explains everything that needs explaining? But finally, beyond the intellectual is the political. How are we going to live well with each other? In our classrooms, in governments, in boardrooms, in neighborhoods, in families. How are we going to do that in Canada or in Australia when we honestly believe that our fellow citizens, our neighbors or family members believe crazy things, right? Not just slightly odd things, but manifestly bizarre things. How are we going to get along? That's the most important, I think, the most important political question of our time. And we won't be able to answer it adequately unless we appreciate just how much we share with our neighbors, yes, and also just how much we don't. For I have to confess that I think Richard Dawkins and Friedrich Nietzsche, brilliant as they are, and also people of a number of other beliefs, are in some important respects actually dumb delusional and dangerous. And yet God calls me to love and treat them properly as neighbors. Well, to do that means at least to abandon sentimentality and to regard the situation as it actually is. And that's what I've been trying to do tonight. Thanks for your attention.